whilst I've recorded many voices, I've also read the words of many others in the files of the Folklife Survey. This, for instance, is one thing I was reading recently. The harvest was very late. In some places, corn was cut in the month of October. The year, in fact, is 1879. The reason why we know it's 1879 is because Robert Mulcrane of Balaf was standing in the field with his father as a 10-year-old. This is the sort of memories that stretch back in the island through the Manx Museum Folklife Survey, through the other people who have gone and asked the previous people of the days past. John Neen the Gow, the sort of the pin-up of the Manx language uh, revival, John John Gow, dictated his memories to his daughter in 1948. This is a man who was born in 1860. These are the sort of voices, the Manx voices, that we have access to in this particular island. A man born before the American Civil War broke out. Incredible. And we have in the Folklife Survey an ethnographic archive that stands as an achievement along the lines of the Irish Folklore Commission and the School of Scottish Studies. Leslie Quirk, who was one of the field workers for the Folklife Survey, was actually trained by the Irish Folklore Commission. The Irish Folklore Commission visited the Isle of Man. Their first sound recordings done were of the last native speakers of Manx. Eric Regina worked on the survey, later went to the School of Scottish Studies. Basil McGaw later followed from the Manx Museum to the School of Scottish Studies. But this archive is little known, it's little used, and there are so many Manx voices in there that need to be heard again. It is thanks to Leslie Quirk, whose name I see on here, and Walter Clark as well, and many others, Eric Regina and many others, and especially Grace Mary Quilliam as a field worker in organisational ex- Finger extraordinaire of the Folklife Survey that we have this, this particular archive. Just this week I was, I was reading the early correspondence of the Folklife Survey and I came across this letter written by Grace Mary Quilliam to the Gow's daughter, Millie Neen, this is from 1948. And it says here, I like to imagine some student a hundred years from now looking into our files to find what life was like then and reading your book and the facts we collected ourselves from your father. Well, I have turned up a little bit earlier than that. I didn't wait a hundred years to turn up to read uh, the Gow's reminiscences and that of many others. And as uh, Sarah Christian sitting here who works in the Manx Museum and also representing here the Balaf Heritage Trust and the Isle of Man Family History Society knows that I've read a lot of files in the Folklife Survey. In fact, Sarah, I counted them up today and I've called up 114 files from the Folklife Survey. And there's always one more file to read. There's always one more item to call up from the Folklife Service. It is an absolutely remarkable archive.